that paper, uh, that paper is insane. The one, the, the, the one by, by, by the interview with Michael Dell. Good morning, good morning, Ochi. Uh, you will see this, uh, this paper becomes even more uh, crazy after we do this simulation because you will see, of course, uh, Michael Dell, as, as most of these uh, entrepreneurs, um, he was courageous, he was brilliant and everything, but he was also lucky because I am absolutely sure that uh, he didn't know about the things that we will discuss after we do the, the, our simulation here. And, and it's, it's huge problems that companies have uh, in their information flow uh, that I'm sure as being a medical student, uh, uh, you know, he wouldn't be aware of that. He was just lucky uh, to, to, to see other things. And then when, when addressing other issues, also solving the, the, the problems that we will, uh, we will discuss today. All right. So hope you all had a, a great weekend uh, and let's uh, start, uh, let's get straight into our uh, simulation today because uh, it's going to be a busy day. Uh, uh, the idea of the, of the beer game, the game that we are going to be uh, playing today, uh, was something that was captured uh, by Professor Forrester in the 50s, so some 70 years ago. Uh, he was teaching students uh, uh, at the MIT um, in Boston, uh, and he and they, well, they were they, they were business students, uh, and he wanted to discuss with them uh, the the. The issues that we had uh, with respect to information flow in the what I'm calling here uh, when I let, let me just show you my screen here when I when, when when I refer to the value chain here this is usually the way uh, marketing people uh, call the supply chain right uh, uh, operations management uh, people call it supply chain marketing people call it value chain for us it's the same uh, Marketing people call it value chain because they claim that whoever is involved in in the production of a, of a good or a service should be there because they're able to add value. They're able to add more value than costs to the to the let's say to the proposition. Right? Uh, we've already said that engineers are very focused on the cost side of uh, of uh, any project because uh, engineers are problem solvers. Um, marketing people are more pushed towards the value side of it because they, well, they, they, they leave the problems for the engineers to solve, but they are the one, many times they're the ones that are able to, to find where value is and, 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 and what customers value, right? So regardless of if, uh, of if we call it the value chain or the supply chain, what we're talking about here is about all the the different links in a chain of uh, suppliers from raw, if it was a, if we're thinking of a, a, a more industrial let's say kind of proposition from the raw materials from, from those guys who who collect the raw materials from from nature to those who convert raw materials into parts or uh, and, and to those to, to those who assemble those parts and finally to the end customer or, or to, 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 to the end customer who is the consumer of the, the product. Of course, the word consumer already gives us a hint that what we are doing is probably not that great, right? When we are consuming something, it means that we are, we're, we're, we're putting an end to whatever. Others put a lot of effort into building something and we are the ones who are destroying that uh, in, in a sense, right? Uh, if we think of um, our society in the future, I hope that we... We, we rethink our, our um, let's say, our purpose as consumers because we shouldn't be those who are, who are consuming um, the efforts of others uh, uh, if we want to have, uh, if we want to live in a world that is sustainable in the sense that uh, at the end uh, we, we have more than what we had at the beginning. But anyway, that was the little... Uh, uh, philosophizing a bit about uh, uh, where, where we go with our consuming society uh, and consumerism. But anyway, in, in, in our, in our uh, supply chain or in our value chain, we, ha we have val several links. Uh, and in our simulation, we, uh, which is basically what I did is I, I, I got acquainted with uh, uh, Professor Forrester's uh, model some many years ago. 
uh, at the beginning, I, I, I think, of course, what, what he proposed was a game that was, was played as a table game, uh, a game that you played with uh, pieces on... on, on um, and, and, and uh, of course, being someone in the IT field, um, I remember the first time that I created a, a, an electronic version of this was still in the 90s or so, right? We, uh, and, uh, well, I had versions of that uh, written in ASP, uh, which Microsoft technology... Uh, then I had some students of mine when my, my when the game that I wrote the first time uh, was starting to get a little obsolete because I mean we we needed to play with a, with a lot of uh, details of Windows so that it would still work you know and I didn't want to rewrite the code uh, they wrote it in in I think in uh, a version of it in Java uh, and uh, and finally that also started I, I mean it was a version that we used uh, in regular in a, in a regular computer lab, uh, but I wanted to have to, to also use it in like we are here, completely virtual. Uh, and then that version also needed to be to be re uh, rewritten or something. And I decided, you know, I'll make this thing simple. I will just code this. Well, I'm not even going to code it. I'll just bring the the formula uh, into Google Sheets. Right. So the game that I, that we are going to play today uh, goes on Google Sheets. I will just show you uh, very... By, by the way, I, I, I'll be inviting... Can, can you see my screen? Mm -hmm. Can you see my cursor today? Yes, yes. Good. <laughs> Good. <laughs> it, it took me about 40 minutes of, uh, of browsing on the web to figure out... And everything that people told me what I had to do didn't work until suddenly it started working and I don't even know you know what, what I did there. So I, I cannot even recommend to others. But anyway, uh, all right. So I will be uh, sharing this uh, spreadsheets uh, with you. Uh, I'm, I'm taking your emails here. Uh, I think they are all emails that um, that Google is aware of because you know it's already telling me that it knows these addresses. But if, if by any chance you have, you know what my experience is when I try, uh, when I invite people here using email addresses that are not Google friendly in the sense, you will have to be doing a lot of, uh, you, you know, answering emails and proving that you're, you're, you're yourselves. So I will, uh, will send this. And if you don't get an email very easily, maybe if you, if you have another Gmail account, we can, we can, uh, we, 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 we can include that, right? Some of the inconveniences uh, of me having a Google Drive uh, or a Google Sheets uh, um, a solution here instead of the old Java or the old ASP uh, application that we had for that is uh, there's no protection whatsoever, uh, which means that we will have to be careful here. Uh, I didn't protect any of these uh, sheets. It, it's, it's full of formula. If you see here, wherever I click, uh, you will see that there is a formula there. This is to make uh, uh, our our game uh, easier and so that we don't have to do any calculations. We just take the decisions that are required in our simulation, right? So what will happen is we will have uh, one of us playing the retailer, and it's going to be me. Uh, maybe we could have, uh, uh, maybe we could go like that. Uh, Vasin, you could be the wholesaler, so you would be in the second tab. And then we could have uh, Pradeep being the distributor, so he would be in the third tab or the blue tab. And then we could have Uchi as the manufacturer. That means that he will be in the red tab of our, our spreadsheet when, when we start the, 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 the game, all right? You will see, for example, that in any of the tabs right now, uh, except for the retailer, none of them has this green, see here on column I, uh, when it shows uh, uh, one of the cells is in green, that means that, for example, that means that as, as I am the retailer, that means that it's my time to place uh, an order here, right? But I'll, I'll, uh, the, the idea is, uh, this, is this is a game that, in which the only information that will flow along the supply chain or the value chain is the orders that we place to our suppliers. So for example, uh, uh, I am here in a situation where I would I could place an order, I would place an order and as, as soon as I place my order here, let's say let's say I, I, I place an order of 10, 10, 10, 10 cases of beer. By the way, look, which one of us will have an, uh, 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 an inventory, initial inventory of 20, it's it's twenty units, right? It doesn't matter if it's if it's uh, if, if we're talking about cases of beer or or bottles of beer, but anyway, I have an I had an inventory of twenty. The end customer, the end customer is uh, has already I've already coded the, the orders, right? The, the, the end customer ordered ten. Mm -hmm. 
uh, I was able to notice that this is all calculated here because as soon as, as the end customer places an order of 10, uh, I, uh, I can already say that I am able to serve the customer with those 10 beers because I had 20 in stock. So I'm, in this case, I am able to serve uh, the customer to, attend, to, to meet the, the requirement. I do not miss any sales. I, I would have missed a sale here if uh, my order, sorry, if, if, my, my, if, if my customer had, had ordered um, uh, a, a number of beers here that is larger than the inventory that I had. Okay, in this case, there, was, there were no missed sales. And by the way, um, being the, 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 the retailer, I am the only one among us in the whole value chain uh, who uh, will, will lose, will, will miss sales in case I, I, I do not have enough inventory to fulfill uh, the customer's order. Uh, I, I may miss sales, but I will not uh, be able to fulfill the sales in the future. That means uh, when, when, when my customer, considering that I'm the retailer here, uh, when my customer goes to my pub and asks for a beer and I say, oh, I'm sorry, I ran out of beer. Uh, there is no chance that he will come back in a week time uh, and uh, f for the same beer. They may come back for another beer, but they're not going to, 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 to say, well, I came for, the, for a beer today and please give me the one from last week, right? The, the end customer is, um, uh, only takes, uh, 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 only takes uh, his or her orders in real time, let's say. Everyone else, everyone else in the supply chain, in the value chain, does... Uh, 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 concern about um, uh, these missed sales and what they will do is well I cannot uh, meet your requirement right now but as soon as I have I will send it to you because everyone else works with an inventory with the possibility of having an inventory right, right. Um, so again uh, uh, and, and I'm only going to be the, the retailer here because we are only four people including me right otherwise I'd have another student being the, the retailer and I would be just observing what, what's happening because of course I have played the game before uh, and so I, I know what's going to happen uh, and therefore the least I, 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 the, the least I, I, I intervene in the game, uh, the least I will change the perceptions or, and the results that we will have uh, with, with the simulation, right? But anyway, notice I, I still have a final inventory here of 10 because, uh, well, I had 20 at the beginning of the Let's call week here. It, it's the rounds of the game, right? Uh, of course, we're not going to be playing this for 50 weeks. Uh, we, 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 all, all our rounds will happen uh, over the next 50 minutes or so. Uh, but, uh, but still, uh, um, for this first round, I do have a final inventory. After, I, after my customer orders and after I fulfill the orders, I still have an inventory of, of 10. Uh, column I is going to be always the column in which uh, we're going to place our order. So if you... If you look at uh, your your tabs, also it's always going to be it's the one that is in pink, right? This is where when it's our time we'll be able to, to place our orders, uh, and then we have a few uh, columns here that show uh, some additional information. For example, uh, uh, if when I ordered, uh, uh, notice that I place my order here, right? I place an order of ten, uh, and then I, I get a confirmation from my supplier. Who's my supplier? considering that I'm the retailer. But Vasim is the wholesaler. So uh, Vasim uh, has already confirmed that he, he has checked, that he had uh, at least 10 in inventory. So he was able to get 10, uh, 10 beers uh, from his inventory, put in a truck and send it to me. The, the, the thing here is it takes two weeks or two rounds for the beer that he confirmed that he sent to me to be part of my inventory. Right. This is what we call, we usually call the lead time. The lead, the lead time. Yeah, go on, Basim. Uh, by saying two weeks, Alex, like I can see here, for example, uh, expected dispatch or actually dispatch is ten in my my cell. Yeah. So so let me show what what you're seeing in your in your uh, tab. Notice that uh, again. Th this is this is Basim's tab that I'm showing now. And by the way, we are seeing each other's tabs only for now to understand the game. All right. Afterwards. Each one of us will focus on only on our tab because yeah. this is a simulation and we are simulation. We're trying to simulate this with the kind of information that uh, is usually available to, to, organ to most organizations. Most organizations, the information they have about the market is the orders that their customers place, right? 
uh, at least more, more traditional business where there's still not a lot of uh, uh, additional information, uh, 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 information flow. The, the, the information flow that they have is they know that their customers order something and then based on the orders they get, they place their orders to their own suppliers. So notice here that uh, Vasim also had an initial inventory of 20. As I told you, for simplification here in our, in our game, everyone has uh, originally started with a 20, uh, 20 beers uh, as inventory. I ordered 10, right? Uh, notice that here for Vasim, and, and you will also have uh, uh, this column that I didn't have as the retailer. You have here previously unattended orders. Why you have this column? Because remember, if you have received orders in the past that you were not able to fulfill, as soon as you, you have uh, enough inventory, you will fulfill the, those orders, right? So this is why we, we're keeping track of this, okay? Uh, Notice that the, the expected dispatch is 10 because, uh, of course, that was what I ordered. The, the, the expected dispatch would be more than 10 if you had previously unattended orders because then it would be the sum between what I'm ordering plus the, what, what you had not attended uh, previously, all right? So here it's fine. Your expected dispatch is 10. You, your actual dispatchment, uh, the dispatch is 10 uh, because you do have it in stock. You did not miss anything. It's important to, to notice that here this column is missed dispatch. It's not uh, missed sales because the sale will happen as soon as you have uh, that amount uh, of, of, uh, of inventory to fulfill that order. In your case? Therefore, it's, therefore it's going to be unintended order. Pardon? It will be? In that case, it's going to be unintended, uh, unattended order, right? For, for the retailer... For the retailer, it was a missed sale, uh, uh, missed, missed sales because it will not happen again. For 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 the uh, wholesaler and for the, the others, it's a missed dispatch. Uh, it's a missed dispatch because you were not able to send it now. Uh, uh, but when you have inventory, you will send it. I will make this very clear right now. Right, uh, it would be your your time to play here. And another thing that we'll have to do here, uh, of course, this is Google Sheets that. Uh, I, uh, Maybe I can even uh, uh, get this more sophisticated uh, somehow, but of course it was planned to be just spreadsheets, right? Not a game. Uh, so if I change something here in my in my in, in any other of the other tabs, this will have uh, this will cause changes in the other tabs, which means we also have this as as, as a an agreement among us. After we've placed an order, even if later on in the simulation we think, well, that order was not the best order that I should have made, we cannot change, right? Because of course others have already taken decisions based on our on, 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 on our or on the information that they had right but let's say just for the sake of, uh, of understanding the game I, I went back here to the retailer and let's pretend that I had not placed a, an order of 10 I had placed an order of 30 here okay we, we can after we've, we've made a decision and, play, uh, and, and, and pressed enter we do not change any longer because others will take their decisions and we don't want uh, uh, and, and again but let's let's say nobody has taken the decisions yet so I will Let's say I was I was quick enough. Vasim had not seen his his um, his tab yet. I, I I have placed down an order of thirty. What will happen there? Let's have a look at uh, Vasim's uh, uh, situation now. Notice the initial inventory was twenty. The retailer now ordered thirty. What happens? Did we have any unattended orders? Yeah, we didn't have any any unattended orders from the past. But now the expected dispatch is larger than the inventory that uh, Vasim has. So he will actually dispatch the 20 that he has in stock. And there will be 10 that he will send to me as soon as he has, right? He doesn't have that yet. So as soon as he has enough inventory, he will send it. Uh, it's important uh, that this is tracked because a missed dispatch on week one will come will become a previously unattended order in week two. So you'll see that the, whatever comes here is the information that you have there, right? Uh, and then we get to a situation where uh, Vasim has to place his uh, order to Pradeep, who is the distributor. Just give me a give me a, a number there, Vasim. Uh, I would say forty. Forty. Okay. So when uh, Vasim uh, places an, an order of forty here, well, we'll see uh, soon what happened there to the distributor. But first, well, let's have a, a look here. Uh, notice that. Uh, Vasim, uh, sorry, Pradeep has sent, has confirmed. Yeah, I, I checked here. I have 20 in inventory. Of course, we all knew that for round one, everyone had 20. So he said, I put 20 in a truck and sent to you. In two weeks time, 
uh, which means in week three, what I'm dispatching now will uh, will, will be part of the wholesaler's inventory, right? Uh, there's nothing in, in transit. I, I, I usually uh, the in transit is this 20 are going to be in transit next week, and then the third week, so in week two, it's going to be here, right? And in week three, it will add to 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 the, in the initial inventory. Well, the initial inventory of the other in the other tab. Okay. Uh, oh no, hang on, hang on. Sorry, uh, because uh, uh, yeah, it, it, the, the the this is the information that the distributor is sending. So the distributor put in the truck. Next week, it, this twenty will show here, and then the, the week after, it will show as. Uh, yeah, it, it will become it, the truck will arrive and it will become uh, uh, inventory for in this case for for Vasim. Okay. Uh, notice another information that we haven't discussed yet. Uh, we we do have here two costs that are very important to us. We either will have costs of non-fulfillment or costs of carrying inventory. Let's go back to the retailers uh, tab here and see what happened here. For for week one, uh, the for for week one uh, there was a final inventory of ten, and then that meant. Was there any cost of non-fulfillment? No, we, there was no cost of non-fulfillment because the end customer had asked less than you had in inventory and then I had an inventory and then I was able to meet the expectations of the customer. But there was a cost of carrying inventory, right? This cost of carrying inventory is related to the final inventory I have uh, at, the end of the, at the end of the round. Uh, for, for the game's sake, right, I, I, I could have chosen any value here. I, I, you know, I just coded this as being half the number of, uh, of beers that I have in inventory. So if I have 10 beers in inventory, I will have a cost of carrying inventory of five, that, that's called five monetary units, five uh, dollars, five uh, euros or whatever. Okay. That was my cost. But now let's have a look at what happened to the wholesaler because the wholesaler is in a different situation. The wholesaler ended up having zero as final inventory for week for the first week right that means that there is no cost of carrying inventory uh, the, the, the inventory is is is, is empty the, the, the stock is empty but there is a cost of non-fulfillment of the customer's order and in this case uh the monetary uh value of this cost of non-fulfillment was precisely the number uh, the, the, the the same same number of monetary units of the, the of the, the bottles of beer that uh, that uh, that the, the the wholesaler uh, missed uh, sending to the to, to, to the retailer, does that make sense? Basically, uh, uh, of course, we could argue this is a simulation. Uh, I you know, the, the reason why I, I made the cost of non fulfillment being larger than the cost of carrying inventory uh, uh, was that. The cost of carrying inventory may be may happen week after week. For example, if you if, if you're overstocked, and if your customer doesn't is is, is not uh, is not is not buying your beer, you will have that cost of carrying inventory week after week, and the cost of non fulfillment relates to one uh, one, 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 one one situation. Of course, it may also keep going for for future weeks, because if you are not able to fulfill it now. Uh, and you do nothing about it, and you, you, you do not order more beer so that you can fulfill that in the in the future, you will keep paying that kind of cost. But we basically have two kinds of costs, and those are the costs that usually um, the production manager or the, the operations manager, let's say, uh, usually has. Uh, it's uh, The ideal situation would be if we could uh, work uh, with uh, zero inventory, right? That, that's again, that has a lot to do with the Japanese attempt of running their manufacturing plants, the most of their quality control systems uh, and the theory that was developed uh, over the 1970s and 1980s uh, was about uh, reducing the levels of stock because the Japanese believed that uh, if you produced, that, for example, cars, Toyota, the Toyota system, if you produce cars that would later on be uh, sitting there on on a on a retailer. Uh, without being sold because simply because the customers were not willing to buy it, it was better not to produce it. So what the Japanese companies were trying to do was to reduce the cost of carrying inventory. Of course, if you reduce the cost of carrying inventory uh, drastically, you, you then uh, may 
may have the other kind of cost that is the cost of non-fulfillment. So the customer go, goes to the retailer, wants to, wants to buy a Toyota car, for example, and there is no car there available, and then they go and buy a Ford car because, let's say, Ford has uh, a car ready to go. Uh, so there is always this dilemma. Do I want to convert my sales into into sales uh, in, into orders that the customer asks or, or, or for, for the product and then I say yeah I'll send it to you as soon as I as I have it ready or do we want to have it off the shelf to make sure that we we are able to meet that uh, the customer that wants to has decided to buy uh, the product and wants to buy it straight away right uh, I can tell you that even in the the auto industry in the the car industry uh, companies sometimes prefer to have some um, inventory because I mean uh, we as customers may be planning to buy a car for 10 years right but when we decide to buy it we want we want it the, the same day right if we go to the, the car agent or to the car dealer and they don't have our car we go somewhere else and buy it there it's it's we're not uh, we, we're not rational uh, we're not hyper rational in that sense sometimes we don't want to wait a single day Although we have worked for 10 years to buy that product, right? We worked for 10 years and then we went, we went to buy it the day we, the day we wish, okay? Uh, but anyway, uh, this is to say that we have two, two kinds of costs, either non-fulfillment or the cost of carrying inventory. Uh, and, and of course, uh, uh, we will have an overall cost every week. And this overall cost is basically the sum of these two costs here, right? Which is basically the sum of zero with something else. Or something else with zero, because we can never have the two costs at once, right? We will not never have a situation in which we 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 have costs of non fulfillment, and at the same time we have costs of carrying inventory. Because if we do have inventory, we we're not attached to it, right? We're not going to tell our customers, "Sorry, I'm not going to sell you because I have too few of those," right? If we produce it, it's because we want to sell. Okay, so this is the uh, uh, the the simple idea of the game. Maybe we could. Uh, go. I just want to show a slight difference that exists here for the manufacturer. Gucci, for example, decides on the amount to produce. But uh, in in our oversimplified world here, uh, Gucci has no uh, no suppliers. So when he decided to brew some beer, he he has all the hops and he has all the malt. Uh, he has all the water he needs and he has all the ingredients. He doesn't have to order ingredients and, and wait until the supplier provides those ingredients so that he can uh, produce his beer, right? So Uchi, when Uchi decides to, to, to brew beer, he will he, he doesn't rely on anyone, but he still relies on time. Brewing beer takes time, and in our case, it takes also two weeks. So this is why we're keeping track here of uh, beer that is uh, in the process of being uh, produced. Um, we we have the, the amount to, to, that, that he decides to produce here and then uh, the, the, here we have what is in process which will end up uh, uh, um, adding to the, the initial inventory two weeks later also so not immediately after two weeks later okay uh, and he will also have the same kinds of costs here. so this is the idea of the game uh, what I will do here yeah go on Basim. Uh, is there any assigned budget for each in this game? No, no, it's uh, uh, we're we only thinking, uh, uh, you're correct, you, you should think of that because I mean, uh, in I the this would make like a more reasonable purpose of it because it shows how, based on your technique, you can watch your loss or your profit. Yeah, but no, notice that we, 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 uh, uh, we, it's a simplification of reality, of course, we usually you usually would have uh, budgets for whatever you do. But we don't have to concern too much about that because, of course, even considering that I'm giving you unlimited uh, budget, that doesn't mean that you're going to, to order unlimited amounts or that Uchi is going to produce unlimited amounts because if you, if, if you produce unlimited amounts, that means that you will have very high costs of carrying inventory, right? You're spoiling the game. Pa pardon? No, I'm not spoiling the game. I'm, I'm uh, well... I mean, you're reasonable people, right? You're not going to say, I'm going to produce... I've already told you, there is good in, in, in doing what Toyota thought uh, of, of their their Toyota system, that is, try to have as little uh, uh, stock as possible. At the same time, having too little uh, stock will, will, will end up uh, uh, generating costs of non-fulfillment, which are also a problem. 
but but what I'm saying, yeah, yeah, go on, Uchi. Yes, yeah, so we're going to talk about the Dell article after we, we do the simulation. Oh, so we have to take the idea from Dell article here, right? Um, I don't know if you, you, you won't be able to take uh, uh, the, uh, the ideas of the, the, the article here, I believe, because uh, what I'm proposing here is... It, it, it will definitely... I mean, you, you, may, you may get insights from there, but I don't think that it will help you too much, Uchi. Be Okay, uh, it, it's definitely the things are connected, but uh, for example, Dell works in a different way, right? Dell is the manufacturer who sends, the, who sells directly to the the end customer. We don't have this possibility here, right? So Uchi, you 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 will only sell to your distributor, and your distributor is going to sell to the wholesaler, who's going to sell to the retailer, who's going to to sell to the the, the end customer. So it's not it's not the same situation. Proper, yeah, I, I believe so. I believe so. Uh, and now you're spoiling the game. <laughs> you're telling me not to spoil the game, and you're but you're spoiling the game. But what we have to do now, <laughs> you know, what we will do now is uh, we're going to play this game as it happens in many uh, in many supply chains where. The only information that you have, the only information that you share with your customers, uh, sorry, with your suppliers, is your orders, right? And the only information you 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 share with your customers is the confirmation of their orders to the to the best uh, that you can. You either confirm the order, say yes, I'm shipping exactly what you you ordered. You will get that in two weeks' time, uh, or saying sorry, I'm not shipping what you ordered because I don't have that amount, but I'm shipping all that I have for now, and I will be making sure that I get the remaining and will send to you later, right? This will happen to everyone except for the, 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 the retailer. The retailer is the only one who, uh, uh, I mean, whatever the, the retailer asks the wholesaler, the wholesaler will send to the retailer, but the retailer is not going to be able to push uh, uh, the beer uh, to, the, to the end customer because the end customer is going to say, sorry, you didn't have beer last week. I'm not going to drink more beer this week because of that. Last week I was really mad at you. Uh, you should be thankful that I came back to your pub, but I'm only drinking what I want to drink now. I'm not drinking for last week, right? This, this is how it's going to go. Okay, uh, what I will do here, I will uh, delete these orders that I've placed. You, you have to be very careful, again, not to touch any other columns than, uh, than column I. And uh, at the same time, you, you have to be careful to also only place an order when you have a green cell, right? You also don't know, uh, 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 if we think of the, the amount of technology that we are using here, considering that you are IT people that are going to help solve uh, information flow uh, processes in, in organizations in the future, uh, we are doing, technically we're doing really great here because whenever I place an order here as, as the retailer, uh, it gets to Vasim in, in a fraction of, of time, right? I place an order here and Vasim, and let's let's say that uh, this is my system and then uh, this is Vasim's system and, and then if I click here on, on the distributor step, it would be considered this as being completely different systems, but they are interconnected in the way that when I place an order here, my order will appear there in Vasim's screen, right? In real time, so that he can very quickly take his uh, decisions and, and notice. So we are using, I mean, it doesn't, we're, we, we are operation management people here. We're not concerned with all the technological technological miracles that had to happen. When I place an order here, this order has to go to my, let's say here to my internet provider and then sent to, to a satellite. Uh, and, and then uh, it will be processed in a data center in possibly in India. I don't know where Google has its, uh, its, its data centers. In India, probably not in California, right? The energy, the cost of electricity in California is too high. But anyway, it will go somewhere in the world and come back to me in a fraction of a second, which means from the technical point of view, if Vasim was, was talking to, 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 to his boss, he would be saying this happens instantly. And his boss would be understanding the, the English uh, that, that Vasim is, is saying, because whenever I place an order, it's immediately available to, 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 to my supplier. Whenever my supplier 
confirms. In fact, my supplier, you've probably noticed that the supplier confirms the order even if the supplier's manager is at the beach because it's already, if it has in stock, it will, everything is done automatically here. Of course, uh, uh, the supplier will have to then decide on his or her own order. So this, this, this is not, we do not have a, uh, the machines uh, taking over that decision yet. Right? So they're, the, the decision is still human made, but, uh, but all the information flow here is automated. So what we will do is uh, from now on, each one of us will be in their own tab. So Vasim is going to be in the wholesalers tab. Uh, Pradeep is going to be in the distributors tab. Uchi is going to be in the manufacturers tab. I'll be in the retailer tab. And we don't change tabs any longer, right? Because we don't, that's the information we have. We don't, we, we don't have the, the whole spreadsheet of our suppliers or customers. Okay, so this is our deal. We, we will work with the information that we have and we'll try to do the best we can. And the best we can is uh, what? To try and reduce our costs or keep our costs as low as possible. Okay? okay. Um, we will play this for a number of rounds. The first few rounds, uh, we, we can go a little slower so that you understand that. I, I mean, the, uh, basically the mathematics is very clear and very direct, uh, but, but still, we can go a little slower at the beginning and afterwards, this is going to be a little more automatic. Uh, uh, you you or, already understand what you, you see that, that your customer's order is always go, going to be on column uh, C. And based on what your customer uh, ordered, based on, on your inventory, based on the time it takes, the two weeks that it takes for your, your inventory to be resupplied, uh, and based on, on your cost of non-fulfillment or cost of carrying inventory, you will be taking that single decision on column I, right? Again, be very careful not to, 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 to delete any of the formula here because if you do, it will, it will probably take me longer to figure out what you did wrong than to, to teach the class or for us to, to analyze. So make sure that you only keep to the green cell. When it's green, you, you click there and you, you, you place your order and then you, you just wait until, it, until the next uh, cell gets green, all right? Uh, okay, so uh, any, any, any other questions there for now? No. No, are you fine? If you have any, any questions, of course, uh, uh, um, uh, just feel free to, to, to ask. And of course, when you ask questions, that information will be, of course, all of us will, will know, about it, uh, know about it, right? So we are sort of out of our supply chain and we are in, into our classroom again. Uh, but whoever has a question, please ask and I will try uh, to answer it in a way that we, we make it clearer for everyone, but it, it should be uh, okay. What I will do, I will change my screen here so that you don't see my playing also. Uh, and we are all, from now on, we are all players. Uh, make sure that you are in your own tab. Uh, so again, the rules, you have to be in your own tab all the time. You don't see the, the other people's tabs. You don't send them WhatsApp messages or but there's no other way of, of, of talking to your, to your suppliers or customers. Uh, you only write on column I. When, it, when the cell is green, uh, what else? You don't, you, after you, you've placed an order, you don't change it. Uh, if, you, if you, at any time, you think that you've committed some mistake, uh, you try to fix it from then on, you cannot go back and, 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 and redo things because of course, others have already taken decisions on your orders. And the main thing is, uh, of course, we will probably see, uh, I'll, 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 be, I'll be able to, to tell you who won or who, who, who lost, or, but, but the main idea here is not to, to see who won or who lost the, the, our simulation at the end. Uh, the main idea is for us to observe what happened. Uh, and uh, I'm sure that some curious things will have happened there by then. So uh, try not to mess up. Try to, to take all your decisions to be logical decisions at that time. Uh, because we, we, we usually, at least we tend to think that players in the market are logical, rational people trying to take their best decisions so that they make the, the best possible business. Okay. All right. Uh, I am uh, placing my first order here. And uh, I guess uh, Vasim can already play his and, and then, then we can keep going. Yes, yeah, so you and, and by the way, if, if in any round you need to, you decide not to place a, an order, then you have to to play zero and, and enter. Yes. Oh, okay. So it's possible to not place any order. It's possible to place an order of zero if you're overstocked, for example. Oh, 
Okay, so if you if you think that you have too much stock, you can you can place an order of zero, right? So after you've placed your order, just whenever you place your order, just tell us because then the, the next link is everyone has to be awake there, right? We. <laughs> okay, I placed the order, guys. Like two seconds ago. So Pradeep can place his place his order. And I guess we Uchi. I think it's probably your turn. Uchi, hurry up! I have clients, please. <laughs> Make the real fast, Uchi. It's I, I I tell you that it's a link that is always we cannot play while the others haven't. But in fact, there is the possibility of sometimes there are two people that have the green uh, uh, have the green, so it may be. Uh, if, we're, if we're all watching that, whenever it's green, we can play, right? Yeah. Uh, the... Go on. The first first few rounds you can play slower because. <laughs> Pradeep, don't, Pradeep, don't stress me. <laughs> hey, that 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 information shouldn't uh, shouldn't happen, Uchi. <laughs> you, yeah, go on, Basim. Yeah, right. Basim, you have a question. Uh, now we breach. We breached week three, and I didn't get my order. Remember, remember, uh, remember that uh, whatever was dispatched, uh, dispatched by uh, by Pradeep will take two weeks to 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 reach you. So the first week it, it's going to be in in dispatch confirmed. Uh, it's dispatched. The second week it's in transit, and then it will will get uh, to you. So okay. so it's pro it's probably uh, yeah uh, I understand. Uh, it's uh, see what whatever was in transit in week two uh, uh, will. Uh, right. I received the first batch. Okay, yeah. I received the first yeah. batch. It, it's too, too below. If, if it's green, if it's green, it's yours. So I don't know. Okay, let me. Yeah, you just just keep there. It's going to show green whenever it's your turn. If at any time you think that uh, something is not making sense, just stop and ask me, and I'll. Someone's door now. I mean, so something happened, right? I had to play twice. Let me see. Yeah. Uh, no, I, I think it's the distributor's time. Yeah, yeah, go. Yeah. It's Pradeep. Who's, Pradeep is sinking. I'm the only one who, who who's allowed to cheat here, right? So I, I I'm browsing from one when when um, tab to the other. Uh, Actually, you're not the only one who's allowed to cheat. You're the only one who's controlling the whole market. I mean, based on your demand, we all are. Moving. Yeah, 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 yeah. But but what I'm saying is that uh, I I I am switching tabs when you uh, to, to figure out whose whose turn it is, and uh, that's, fine. that's what I'm doing. Uh, but you shouldn't. So, Pradeep, I think it's uh, you. You can play again, Pradeep. Yeah, as I said, it, it may be green in two, two, in, in, in two, for two different people. Oh, okay. Because it, it basically it gets green to you when uh, you have already gotten a, a confirmation uh, of uh, of the order from, from the, the other link, right? Yeah, sorry, you, you have to get the confirmation from the other link and, and, your, and, and an order from your customer. Of course, if your customer has not ordered, 
it, it makes no sense for you to place an order. This is. You, you, you will be able to, to whatever appears there as, as uh, missed dispatch for you, yes, you will, be, you, you will have to deal with that as soon as you have enough. Uh, so it's your orders. But notice that sometimes, uh, I'm checking here, I'm, I'm seeing Pradeep's, um, um, Pradeep, Pradeep's uh, tab, and, and that probably also happens in yours. For example, there was a, a round in which Pradeep uh, uh, asked for 50 and he only got 20 dispatches. That means that whenever Uchi is able to dispatch more, he will, right? Because he's also getting some missed dispatch, and what? So there is there is a difference between what you ordered and what you you got, but you will get the remaining uh, when when your supplier is 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 able to, to send that. So just make sure. Uh, well, one of the things that you should concern about is what uh, in I think uh, uh, operation managers call it ghost orders when you place a second order based on the same demands. Watch out for that. That that's something that you don't want to happen. Okay. Although this is forbidden, I'm going to share some information with you. Uh, I've already played some 10 rounds, and in the 10 rounds, I missed sales, at least in three occasions. So it's almost like if the customer, the end customer goes to the pub, uh, each, each, each three times he goes, one of them, there's no beer, which is not very good. We're not being very successful here. But anyway, let's keep going. Let's keep trying to do our best. It's just, it's just a financial crisis. <laughs> It's actually happening. Well, it's it's increasing. It means that, for example, I see that you have a, a, a lot of missed dispatch there for call, for G in, in column G eight. I'm not going to say how much because uh, uh, so you have a lot. You will that is something that you will have to send to yours to to, to Vasim whenever you have. But now I notice also that you also have in, in J, for example, in J eight, you already have sort of a large number there. Those uh, that number that that appears in J eight. Will, be, uh, will appear in K9 and then it will probably appear in, in B10. So you will, at, at some stage, you will, will th that amount will, will, will arrive to you. <laughs> it, it's, it's, see, it, it goes from column J to column K and then to column B. Okay. Look, for example, uh, whatever you had in K, uh, you had in J1, went to K2, uh, sorry, to, to, to K2, and then uh, it uh, yeah it appeared in your inventory in B four. Yeah, so it, it takes those. It's in transit. Then it takes another uh, another week still. You have to be joking. The manufacturer seems a little <laughs> concerned. Uh, hang on, uh, watch out, uh, uh, Uche. I saw that you placed the last time you placed and uh, uh, you decided to brew beer. You still did not have the distributor's order. So exactly. it's uh, confusing actually. The manufacturer is giving uh, extra. Yeah, <laughs> manufacturer, please wait. You you can only place your order when when you 
yeah, after, after the, the distributor has already decided on his own. Uchi is too anxious to solve the problems of beer distribution in the world. <laughs> yeah, now it's your turn, uh, Uchi. Now, now you can... Why the hell we have to play twice? Pardon? Why do I always have to play twice? Twice? Yes. Uh, it's because uh, uh, you, you play once and, and then when you play you, you, you release someone else uh, someone else can play but there was already something in, in, in queue waiting for it's it's the logic of the, the, the game it's locked by two, two what locks the game is uh, your customer should already have placed an order and at the same time uh, you should have already gotten a, a confirmation from your 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 supplier from the previous round. So if those two things are okay, then then you can uh, you can play. It's it's just the logic of the game. It it, 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 it allows for sometimes if you if you're a little behind the the, the schedule there, you have to to rounds uh, one right after the other. Probably. Mm -hmm. so okay. Why do I have to play four times? Okay. The game is going a little faster. Everyone is playing and. See, right at this time, uh, right now, uh, uh, Pradeep has uh, could play and uh, I could play, I believe, yeah. It's usually two people that can play at the same time. In two different parts of the... sharing information that's <laughs> usually you don't have how to share that information with your distributor that's right oh give me a break can i go and search for another retailer <laughs> <laughs> no <laughs> in fact i'm not you know, you know, Vasim, I'm not the only retailer. I'm, I'm in, our, in our simulation here. I am the sum of all your retailers. Okay, okay, I see. I get it. Fair enough. What is this dying market? Oh my god! Oh my god! The manufacturer became excited. <laughs> wow, it seems that the manufacturer will finally be able to fulfill some of the... next week, right?
Oh, you're really too close. Hi. Wow. <laughs> The, the factory became a big distributor now. just in time for a round. Yes! And became Toyota. for very long. Okay, when you get to 50 weeks, 
then you stop. I'm a Fifty one weeks? No, fifty weeks. Yeah, fifty weeks. It's uh, line fifty one, right? Let me see. I think it's only yeah. Uchi still has to place his last order, and then we are okay. Before we go in, don't, don't touch anything. Don't see other people's screens. I just want to have uh, well, considering that Uchi was the manufacturer, Uchi, what were your impressions? Uh, how do you think that the, the the end customer performed as a a buyer? I don't want to do business with him anymore. Why not? <laughs> well, first of all, you, 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 it seems that you're only doing business with Pradeep, but uh, there is a, a, an end customer who's 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 wanting the beer you produce. You don't you don't want to send to, to, to sell the beer to the the end customer. Maybe he's making all the beers because they are really unstable. Unstable, you mean? Who's 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 unstable? The 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 Pradeep, the end customer, the whole the, the whole supply chain. Uh, Uchi, could you tell us, uh, looking at your screen, could you tell us what was the the minimum and the maximum amount you decided to produce? The minimum was obviously zero, right? You were minimum zero, maximum three hundred. Three hundred. Okay, let let me go. Keep to your screen. Don't don't change it. Uh, let me see what Pradeep has to say. How do you think that the end customer was behaving as, as a customer? It's like uh, it's going down to zero and it's, it's coming to greater number. Then he levelized. Okay. Uh, what was the minimum and the maximum uh, number that you ordered, uh, Uchi? Oh, so you ordered from zero was the minimum that you ordered. The maximum, did you ever? Uh, let me see. Uh, you did you? You ordered the maximum that you ordered was two hundred and fifty. Yeah. Okay. All right, uh, Mister uh, Wholesaler Basim, how do you think that the end customer was behaving as a customer? Retailers are really unlucky to have all of you because you are stable, you know your customers, you know your limit, and you know most importantly your sales amount. So for me, you were so predictable. Uh, I almost realized your stock, your needed quantity, and based on that, I was following certain patterns to make sure to get what you will need based on your statistics and the pattern that I could see on your consumption. All right, what? The biggest order I placed, oh, go ahead. No, 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 no. Uh, uh, yeah, well, yeah. T tell me what was the biggest order you placed to Pradeep, to the distributor, and the minimum. The biggest order, the biggest order I placed was fifty-five, and in my opinion, it was like to cover the, the the overload that happened on me with a little margin of the future, so I can arrange myself to get the enough quantity and get back to normal. And the minimum, of course, zero. The minimum was zero, so zero to fifty-five. So let's say it was zero to fifty-five, and then uh, Pradeep was zero to two hundred and fifty. And Uchi was zero to three hundred, right? <laughs> okay. Well, I was. Uh, uh, well, thank thank you, Basim, for for all the compliments. I, I try to be a good retailer here, uh, but uh, I, I try to not 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 to 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 damage too much what the end customer uh, uh, was intending. Uh, but I think I also failed. Uh, if if you have a look at uh, go go to my go go to the retailer's uh, screen. And let's have a look at what happened there. Uh, let me show. So this this was the retailer screen. Most of your missed sales are zeros. That's amazing. Look what happens here. But but no, and uh, notice as I was the retailer, I knew exactly what the order of the end customer was, which was always ten. So I was not that amazing either. I I, I could have done better, right? It was always ten. Always then, from week one to week fifty, the customer was very reliable. Every day he, he knocked at my door, sat on on, on a table, and drank ten beers. It's that... clear. It's clear. Now what happened? 
so so why did we get uh, that messy uh see what i did i i maybe i you know at the beginning here i knew that it would take uh, uh i needed to have uh, i was trying to, to think the same way as you would uh and, and i said well it will take two weeks for for the, the inventory to arrive here so for two weeks i ordered vasim 20. that was the maximum that i ordered him uh, I, and then I said, I'm go I swear I'm only going to ask exactly what the end customer is asking me. I, I, I wanted to do that for the whole game. But notice what was, was happening here. I was having, my final inventory was up to 50. And if, if I kept asking 10, 10, 10, I would always keep that final inventory of 50. And, and, and of course, that generated a cost, uh, uh, a cost of a carrying inventory. So I was tempted here to go back to zero for a few rounds, just to make sure that I got rid of my... My final video. I was doing exactly the same as you were doing, uh, and then I finally got uh, what. At some stage here, I noticed that I was reducing. When it came to twenty, I said, "Well, let me go back to precisely mirror what the end customer is is willing." And then I thought that I was going to go with zero inventory forever, but notice that I started missing a few a few sales here. Uh, but I still, I, I kept to, to, to my, I kept loyal to what I thought I should do. But then my final inventory started rising again. And then for two weeks, I was tempted to go back to zero. Uh, and by doing that, I was able to stick to 10 for the rest of the game. And finally, the final rounds here, I had, well, for, for a few rounds, not, 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 not all of them, for a few rounds here, I was able to, that, that was when I was bragging that I was working like uh, Toyota, right? Saying, Zero inventory. I, I, I had managed to, to get this uh, to, to, to get Vasim to send me exactly what my customers were going to order because I knew exactly what my customers were going to order. But notice that happened for a few rounds and then suddenly I had a problem here again because Vasim was delivering something that I had ordered, so it was not his fault. And I'm sure that if we went for a few more rounds, I would be unbalanced again here, first with missed orders, and then I would start getting. Uh, um, Maybe if I, if, 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 if I, I, you notice that I never went to 20, I, I could have gone to 20 at some stage here too, right? So, um, what is the problem? That, what is happening here? Let me show you a few, um, a few graphs, if I can, let me see. No, not, not this, sorry. Yeah. This is not what I want. Uh, yes, I'll generate it. I just want to check here. Let me see the final inventory graph look at this final inventory uh, it seems that well of course at some stage Pradeep seemed to be overstocked is that what happened let me let, let's have a look at his uh, numbers yeah yeah he definitely got overstocked after a while uh, probably what happened to Pradeep was that he ended up being a victim of those ghost orders that I told you about. Uh, he was placing high, some high orders here, but getting little numbers confirmed. And, and, and maybe the, 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 the orders that he was placing were higher than what uh, had been demand, demanded by Vasim as, as the wholesaler. And at one stage, he was able to get all of that. So when everything arrived here, after he got, he, he got overstocked here, then the numbers of... Uh, of course, I, I don't even know why he was still ordering 10 or 15 here. He could have been ordering zero all the time because, I mean, he was already overstocked. He probably kept a small number there. Why, why did you keep those more, more numbers, uh, Pradeep? Uh, that is, uh, that time I thought I had to uh, keep something a little bit. I, give, uh, I have to give some uh, connection to manufacturer. So uh, I gave some orders. Oh, you, you wanted to the, the, the manufacturer to be happy, right? Yeah, you, you gave him some orders just so so that. But notice that he could have gone with zero for the rest of the, of the game here. After week twenty something here, after he started receiving those huge numbers here, four hundred and twenty five, four hundred and thirty, he was able to finally. Let me see. Miss uh, missed this patch. It's interesting that he was. Yeah, I I, I don't know, Pradeep. Uh, these numbers were uh, already a little strange to me here because you already had final inventory. Let me see when you started having final inventory here. Yeah, I don't quite get uh, a Pradeep's uh, 
logic of of increasing numbers here. Actually, I have confused with the mis uh, mis two dispatch. That's what I increased the products. Yeah, but you you had mi uh, missed dispatch up to here, right? Mm -hmm. Then after this, in fact, you were even able to to play um, zero uh, zero stock here, and then you started. But you started receiving. Uh, it, it's it's interesting because you started receiving the 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 more stock, and you you were becoming overstocked. But you're still. I'm not. I'm I'm not very sure if uh, if you were a rational player there, Pradeep. Yeah. Yeah, maybe you're you're confused between these two lines, and and, and that made uh, things uh, more confusing. But regardless, it doesn't matter what happened here. And and, and by the way, I told you that uh, there we, we could depict uh, a winner. There is no way of depicting winners here because we could only depict winners if we had uh, one value chain playing against another value chain, right? If we had, let's say, if you were eight students here and I had four students in one value chain and four, four other students playing a, a different value chain, I would say, who, who would be the winners? The ones that got the, the lowest overall costs. Because at the end of the day, the, the, the end customer or the consumer is the one who's paying the bill, right? Uh, if the consumer doesn't buy the beer, it's only costs. It never becomes, va it never becomes uh, converted value, right? So, uh, and, and it would be very unfair to compare the, the numbers that we got you know, the, the, or the decisions that the manufacturer was making here to the de decisions that the distributor was making, to the decisions that the wholesaler was making, and to the decisions that I was making, because uh, each one of us had a different level of, of, of information about the market. As I was the, 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 the retailer, I had very good understanding of the end customer. I knew, of course, I, I couldn't know for sure that the end customer would never change uh, the orders here, right? It, it could happen that some, uh, at some stage, summer arrived and people started drinking more beer. I don't know. So I, I was not absolutely sure that the orders would always be 10. But I, let's say I had a very strong, very strong reasons to believe, right? At least after 30 weeks or so, right? Um, so I had, being, being the retailer, I had a better understanding of the, the customers, of the markets, then had Vasim as the wholesaler. And then Vasim as a wholesaler had a better understanding of the markets than Pradeep. And Pradeep had a better understanding of the markets than Uchi because Uchi was four links uh, behind, right? Uh, I don't know if in your countries you have uh, these kids, um, there, there's these kids uh, uh, playing that goes like, like uh, uh, several kids uh, uh, sitting in, in a circle. And then one of them, the, the first one, thinks of a, a word and then uh, this person gossips or this kid gossips that word on the, the year of the, the next kid and uh, that, that, that gossips on, on the, the year of the next and so on and, and you, you try and check what happens to the end if the message is still the same and usually it changes in the middle of the way because there's too many links there's a, a lot of places where there, where noise can can become part of the message and at the end you end up having just noise and no information whatsoever so Uche we cannot say that Uchi played uh, worse than than Basim or me, simply because he was further uh, away. There was a lot a lot more noise between him and the market than there was between me and the market, or that there was between Basim and the market. Right? Uh, even again, I I see uh, some. Uh, I, I was not. I, I don't see the logic in some of us uh, of, of Pradeep's uh, uh, decisions here. Uh, it may have been simply that that Pradeep was uh, was tricked by the. The columns here, and he was thinking it was misdispatched and it was final inventory. Probably that was what happened, right? Uh, but the more links you have in the middle, the more chance you give the, let's say, noise to be introduced together with the information. Right? Uh, let me show you another. So, so we have this graph here. If it was to, to be really pedagogical, if it was to be really didactics, uh, usually what would happen was that the manufacturer would be the one with the largest area below the graph, which means that the manufacturer would be the one for being further away, the one that would be taking the, the worst decisions because there is more noise. And then the distributor would be the second worst, and then the wholesaler, and then the retailer. But in fact, with, with, the, the, with, with the 
the final inventory, it's difficult to say that because notice that sometimes, for example, the wholesaler here was able to pass part of the inventory to the, the retailer. And then the retailer seems to have had a, a higher levels of stock, at least uh, at some stages, than the, the wholesaler, which is, which is not, let's say, not absolutely didactic, uh, not absolutely pedagogical, but real life is, in, in real life, things do not happen exactly like in theory. Let's have a, a look at the other, the other graph that we have here, that is the orders graph. Yeah, this one is probably a little more, uh, even even a little more uh, pedagogical because it shows who has taken the worst decisions uh, in the sense of furthest away from from what the end customer was doing. It was the manufacturer, right? Manufacturer, see, see here uh, when when the distributor asked or or, or asked for for a hundred, the manufacturer went there and, and manufactured two hundred. Here, when the distributor asked for two hundred, the manufacturer went there and manufactured three hundred. So there is a there seems to be some spikes there and, and see who's more the, the end customer was very flat always 10 the retailer was almost as flat right Let's see, see the, the red uh, red line there then the wholesaler uh, was uh, a little less flat than, than the retailer but still flat enough and then the spikes of uh, decision uh, wrong decision making happened mainly with the, the, the distributor and the, the manufacturer. Um, so what are some conclusions that we can, we can get from, from this uh, game? Mm, also one thing that, so during the game, I tried to always overcompensate, like the third time, if I had 200 this week, the next, next, my next order would be 300. I always try to make sure that I have enough for mm -hmm. the next time. Which is a bad perspective. Sometimes from seeing others may go up, but well, it doesn't mean from the it, just, it, it could be um, a factor of very long time. Mm -hmm. like it, would be, it could be four weeks. So they have two weeks, two weeks. So it could be four weeks. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking it's now the order is coming. But in, in fact, if, uh, Uche, if, if you think of the, the time between the, the, the end customer and your decisions, it's eight weeks. Because the, the end, right, the end customer asks the the the, the retailer. The retailer, uh, whatever the retailer asks, the the wholesaler will come in, uh, two weeks later. If, if but but let's say if the wholesaler doesn't have that, it will ask the the distributor, and if the distributor doesn't have it, it will ask the manufacturer. So it's two weeks to manufacture, and then uh, two weeks uh, uh, to to reach the distributor, another two weeks to reach the wholesaler, another two weeks to to reach the retailer. So eight weeks between. Uh, the, the forecast that Uchi could make what needed to be eight weeks ahead. So, for example, I look uh, outside here and I see that the sky is, is blue. I say that there is very little chance that it's going to rain today. Today. If you ask me what's going to happen tomorrow, I'm not as... I cannot make such a good prediction. In two, in two days' time, the prediction is going to be even more risky. In, in eight weeks' time, I have no idea, right? So this is this is what is happening to Uchi as the manufacturer. He has to take predictions to make predictions for a period that is much fuzzier than the periods that that, that other links in the supply chain had to do. Uh, well, what uh, Professor Forrester learned back then when he started rehearsing this with his uh, MBA students was that uh, the, this effect that happened here is that there's clear that there's a clear effect of amplification of uh, Amplification of noise, let's say, an amplification of lack of information. The furthest away uh, a link is from the from the end customer, the more difficult it is to have a clear picture of the of the market. Right? Uh, he calls this, and let, let's see if I can simulate it here. I have a <laughs> let me get this wire here. I have a piece of wire here, right? Uh, he called this the bull whip effect. Why? Because a little movement. Of the hand here, well, it's not, it's not causing the movement that I wanted here, but a little movement of the the hand would cause a huge movement at the other end. So, if the end customer changed just slightly um, uh, their orders, that would make it almost unpredictable for the manufacturer, right? This this is why it's called the bull whip effect or the Forrester effect. Forrester uh, named after the this professor at the MIT who. Who started the, the who, who 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 proposed this game to his students 
in the 1950s? Uh, well, uh, his students were operation management students or business students. We are information systems students, software engineering students, uh, and we have technology that could help. Uh, I'm not sure if, if, if it could help solve information problems, but it could help at least reduce information problems. Uh, what would be your suggestions here? What could we do in terms of these information systems here to make them better? Let me, let me ask Uchi here. Uh, is there any column that you would wish me to include in this in this uh, spreadsheet of yours? Of Pardon? <laughs> the absence of order. Well, that, that's very easy. You know what I can do? Maybe here. Why not here? Let's say end customer's order and customer's orders. Very easy. I mean, we're very high tech people. I just go here and we'll say that I want whatever info is in this column here. Okay. Didn't uh, push the first one. I don't know why. So I'll just set that. I just have to do this. Okay. Is that all you need? Why? 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 Uchi, this, this is probably all you need because you know you know what you do now. When, when I, I just want to be extra. You ask that all. Yeah, no, but, but notice here. I mean, if you have this, uh, in fact, uh, maybe I could even place this at a, a better place. I'll, I'll place it here. And we'll just copy it from here. Control X and. Okay, notice now you 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 you're going to have to decide here. Your decision is the same, but you 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 notice here that the end customer placed an order of ten, and your distributor Pradeep placed an order of twenty. Okay, you, you may make it. You, you may even decide to produce twenty here, right? But what happens here when the end customer places an order of ten, and your distributor places an order of two hundred and fifty? Will you still produce two hundred? Or will you grab the phone and, 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 and have a conversation with Mr. Pradeep and ask, what are you trying to do there? Are you sabotaging our businesses or... Do you understand that this, this, this would be a red flag here or an orange flag, very important orange flag. There's a huge discrepancy here and you're going to, you surely need to understand that. You would probably uh, get to the phone and talk to Pradeep and say, look, I, I don't understand. The end customer is asking for 10. You want 250. Are you going to have a party there at your, your at your distributor? You're, you're going to drink all that beer. What, what is your intent? Right. Uh, so it definitely having this information here, having this column, I'll, I'll, I'll put it in a different color here because it's, it's a very important column now. Right. Uh, I'm, I'm color blind. I think it looks very bad. But anyway, uh, this will show you whenever whenever you're thinking about producing 300, you're thinking do I really want to produce 300 if my end customer is only demanding 10? That means, you know, 30 weeks of demand. It's more than half a year. Do I want to do that in one, one week? Produce what will be consumed over half a year? Does that make sense? So definitely this, this information would be very, very good. How much harder did our uh, engineers here have to work to provide uh, Uchi with this in, this improvement in his in his um, production system. How long did it take me to include this column here? Ten seconds. Ten seconds. Ten seconds of uh, a, te a technical work here to provide him with the, the extra information. Which will make him make better decisions. Yeah? To make much better decisions, right? Of course, uh, it would be more than much more than ten seconds if we were talking about. In in our case, they are all tabs of the same spreadsheet, right? If 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 in fact in in the in the real world we we had to collect this information, it would it would be not as easy as as, as it was here, right? But 
but still, uh, it's, is, is it technically feasible? Is it technically feasible to, to collect information from, from uh, the end customer's orders? Maybe we, we, can, we can predict the data uh, using the artificial intelligence. We can collect the data of last years and... Uh, do you need artificial... Do, do you need, I mean, why sophisticated if we don't need to? Do you need yeah, artificial intelligence to collect last year's... Uh, uh, well, well, and and, and why, why, why do you want last year? I, I mean, why don't you get the information that, you, that is happening right now? How do you predict the today's uh, arrival of... I'm not talking about prediction, I'm, I'm talking about collection. Can you guys hear me? Hmm? Yes, we can, uh, Uchi. I said Dell was Dell's solution. Well, Dell, Dell did something a little different to this, because Dell questioned the, the, the need for, for, the, for the several, for the several um, links there, right? Dell, Dell's solution was, if you go back to our... Let me see where this is. If we go back to this model here, Dell solution was redesigning the, 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 the possible network, right? Uh, in this case, we're still not redesigning the network. We're not, we're not throwing away the distributor, the wholesaler, and the retailer for the beer industry. I don't think that we could apply Dell's model straight to the business, to the beer business, because uh, I can't order the beer that I want to drink uh, directly from the manufacturer, from the factory. Right. So we are still keeping the supply chain. We are not changing. Yeah, in our case here, we're not changing. Of course, I, I do think that we, we we have to question. You know, many times, many times we have to question and see. And it's, not, it's not possible to get info from others. No. Yeah, end customers cannot buy beer directly from the the, the beer manufacturer, but end customers could possibly, uh, well, let's say technology could possibly allow us to have less links here. Maybe we don't need a distributor and then a wholesaler and then a retailer to to reach the. Maybe uh, the, the manufacturer can, maybe we can kill one of these, uh, kill at least one of these links. If we killed uh, Pradeep here, considering that Pradeep was uh, taking some decisions that, that, that were a little crazy there. If we did not have Pradeep as a distributor, if, if, if the manufacturer was getting uh, orders directly from the wholesaler, would this become more agile, faster, and, 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 and better information? Well, definitely, we, we would we would save two weeks, at least in our... Because you're reducing the dependency, that's most important than anything else, mm. apart from the time. Yeah, okay. you're, you're reducing the, the and you're reducing the, the flow, not only of the, the flow of information, but also the flow of uh, products. Of course, many times, for many products, uh, we, we have to see if, if it's possible to, to, if we should question the, the supply chain. Many times, for example, in the beer market, a supply chain, uh, makes uh, it possible to break large numbers of beer, millions of cans of beer, into smaller, uh, 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 let's say, smaller quantities and closer to the end customer, right? The end customer wants to buy one can of beer, not, not 10,000 uh, or so. And, and of course, if you, if you stop, if you, let, let's say, if you stop by a, a beer manufacturer and say, hey, I'd like to buy straight from you because it would be cheaper. First, you would have to drive your car or until the manufacturer, and many times, they would say, sorry, we don't sell straight to, to, to you because the minimum amount that we sell is 100,000 beers. So if you want to buy 100,000 100, cans of beer, knock at our door. Otherwise, don't bother. Okay? They could say that. Uh, so uh, I'd say uh, that for now, we, we should at least think of ways of improving the quality of the information here. Pradeep was talking about using artificial intelligence to predict things. I'm saying, can't this manufacturer think of ways of collecting that the, the data that at least is produced by, there by the, the retailer? Uh, I don't know. Uh, we, we'd have to think. Uh, collecting, yeah. uh, tech, technically it's possible. I don't know if it's, it, it's economically feasible because it would mean that all uh, retailers, all little pubs would have to have, maybe, maybe, maybe the, 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 the beer manufacturer could uh, provide the the retailers with uh, an app that they that, that the waiters could have in their their cell phone that would that, that would uh, sell uh, or that would manage the bit the business of the the pub itself for free but would also give send this information to the to the manufacturing uh, company in real time that could be something as reasonably feasible 
it would probably not provide them with uh, the information about the whole market, right? Because some, maybe some retailers would be out of the, would, would decide not to use that. But still, it, then, then we could go back to, to the prediction that uh, Pradeep wants, wants to do and say, okay, we, let's say we, we can trace what's happening to 20 or 30% of the whole markets. Or, or even if it's 5%. Remember Nike, Nike, uh, sorry, not, not, not Nike. Uh, remember uh, Levi's. Levi's as um, discussed in the McKenna paper, right? Levi's didn't need to, to track what happens when they sold every pair of, of, of jeans. Uh, uh, they, they probably only needed to track a small percentage. If they tracked 1% and if they convinced 1% of the people to provide them with the, their measures, they would already be, be able to use that personalized or that, that, that personalized data to produce uh, products to the mass market that were much more, much better fit, right? So even if, if uh, here Uchi could not introduce his app into the whole, um, into the whole retail and everyone use his app uh, to, to, to buy beer at a pub, uh, Still, if, if his company could do that to a small percentage of the, the whole market, that would probably already give him statistical data that would allow for better prediction. We wouldn't even need sof more sophisticated technology than that. Of course, that's, that's sophisticated enough, but, uh, but uh, not more than that. Okay? Um, now we have a problem with uh, this column that uh, Uchi asked uh, to include here. That is not a technical problem. This is definitely not a, a technical issue now. Uh, the end, uh, sorry, the, the retailer, the, the retailer, the wholesaler, the distributor, and the manufacturer, they were all playing here as if they were trying to optimize uh, their, their results locally, which means each one of us was trying to reduce their own costs. Remember, I was really happy that I was able here to, to work at a a complete just-in-time fashion, which was, uh, let's say, Toyota's uh, dream, just-in-time. Whenever I need, that's when uh, the product will be available. Uh, but notice, I was working just-in-time. For me to work just-in-time for this period, I already sort of sabotaged uh, Vasim's possibility of doing so, because notice that I was ordering 10, and then suddenly I started ordering zero, although the demand of my customer kept being exactly the same. I was optimizing, I, I call this optimizing locally. Remember, from the first day, I keep telling you that engineers are good local optimizers. We, as, as, we are, as we have the vision of the ant, or the vision of the monkey at the most, uh, we optimize based on what the, the ant or the monkey sees. Right? We don't optimize with the, with the ego's perspective. What would be the ego's perspective? The ego's perspective would be uh, the, the, the view of someone who has all the information about everything that is happening uh, on the... Well, you don't even need everything that is happening on the, the supply chain, but you do need to have all the relevant uh, information from the supply chain. So Uchi had already told me that this information about the end customer's orders is very important. So let's say that the, the ego had this information. But then I would say it would have to be the ego in the supply chain, not the ego in each company, because each company was trying to optimize their own profits or their own costs, in spite, or in, in spite of the others. In fact, they were even generating problems for their suppliers. When I was, for example, when, when, when uh, Vasim here was this suddenly decided that, that, that uh, see, notice this change here. He was uh, missing dispatches up to, to, to week 13, uh, uh, week 12, and then on week 13, he started uh, having inventory. Notice that this changed the, the way he, 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 he decided from here on he was only asking zero because he wanted to optimize locally. Telling his supplier that uh, he was ordering zero was probably giving the supplier the wrong information that the market was completely, uh, um, let's say, uh, completely stopped, right? Uh, that the, the end customer was not uh, consuming at all, when in fact that was not the, the reason. The reason was that he was sort of overstocked here and he wanted to balance his own position. So notice that in general, the several players in the markets are trying to optimize their own, their own profits or their, their own costs or whatever without thinking how that affects the rest of the, the supply chain. And this is, this is bad because uh, uh, 
it turns out that the, the cost of each one of you uh, will, will, will be summed up to the cost of your suppliers and your customers and the end customer will have the choice to either pay all those costs or not drinking beer. Okay, or otherwise, maybe if there is if the market is a competitive market, the, the, the end customer will have the chance of of buying the product of, of the competition, and then your only alternative would be selling below your cost. So you you, you would sell at a, at a loss because you had been inefficient, right? But as let's say being inefficient, inefficient as a supply chain, as a value chain, not as a single entity. So the, the huge challenge that exists here, which is not a, a technical challenge, is uh, convincing these people to share their information. For example, con convince the retailer to sell to share this information with uh, the suppliers, uh, considering that this is probably part of his uh, strategic uh, strategic advantage. The, the the retailer may say, "I'm not going to share this information with anyone." because they will use it against me instead of using in favor of all of us. So when we compete with our suppliers and with our customers for the, the money uh, the, the end customer is, is, is willing to pay, uh, we are probably all optimizing locally. And by optimizing locally, we are, we're, not getting the, the, we're not getting the synergistic benefits that, uh, that the information flow could cause. So again, the solution that, that, that Uchi uh, proposed here of uh, getting this information from from the retailers is technically feasible uh, it is strategically or let's say a, 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 in terms of business it may not be that easy it will require some convincing it will require some uh, some um, let's say some exchange of benefit right so Maybe technically if a manufacturer gets the you now have to have the to know what your graphical zone with your product, this set of shops wherever you want to, because you have this data. So yeah, uh, but but it, it requires it, at least it requires a trust among the the, 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 the the let's say the partners in the value chain, and that trust doesn't necessarily always exist. Sometimes, or and many times, uh, the retailers are suspicious about the, the wholesalers. The wholesalers are suspicious about the distributors. Everyone is thinking, well, if they have a chance, they will sell direct. If they have a chance, they will try to push me the product at a, at a higher price. If they think that the market is, is hit up, they will increase prices so that they, 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 they receive the, the most of the, the, let's say, of the benefits. Uh, so this all happens. So what, what I want to say here is that although uh, we can improve the information flow uh, and notice that the, and, and decide what is the, the correct information that should flow from from one link to the other here in terms of improving the quality of of the decision making uh, this will not happen naturally in many cases because uh, there are different interests among the different players there uh, so this is the first thing that needs to be solved and I think this is something that uh, th then this is something that's Dell to some extent was able to solve in his uh, business and this is this is what we will discuss next i just want you to not get too enthusiastic about the fact that technology will solve all the issues here right technology can help improve the the quality of the information flow can help even decide what is the information that needs to to flow to, to, to flow but we will have to find ways of convincing the the the, the players involved that, that that should happen for example one way yeah Talking about um, IT being able to solve. Oh, it's not service. Sorry, it's not yeah. you. Oh, what was it? Maybe it was. Go on. I was like, it was, right? I don't know. I don't know. I was talking about how sometimes it's hard to optimize organizations because we don't really understand there are some business um, secrets or trade secrets. Not business secrets. There's, there's some information that are not available to the engineers mm -hmm. and can never be available when we please they don't have enough intelligence to they might, the idea may be great but it may not be feasible with the shareholders of the company because you don't really have this information right yep 
uh, uh, yeah, it, it was probably it was probably in our class because th this is the reason of this class to show that the problems are uh, at least uh, the problems are not only technical problems. Uh, in fact, uh, the problem that, that, that matters to the rest of the world is the business problems. Yes, again, to go, to go back to to Vasim's ex boss, we should be talking English. We should be talking the language that they understand. They will not talk the language that we technicians uh, or technical people understand. They don't care about uh, uh, this language because this language is only a tools language. Uh, uh, they, they want to talk about the, the, the objectives, the goals, not the means. They hire us to be the means, right? But we have to understand, if, if we want to be valued, we have to understand the goals. We have to understand how to convert our means into ways of achieving those goals. So, for example, supermark uh, uh, supermarkets are the retailers in general, and, and they sell products for many manufacturers. Think of, for example, Nestlé. Nestlé is a, a company that has many products that sell in supermarkets, and they probably would benefit from uh, from, from, from uh, Uche's um, suggestion here of getting information directly from, from the retail, at least, right? The problem uh, with... Uh, with Nestle is that uh, if, if they asked information uh, from, from the supermarkets, supermarkets would say, well, notice, I, I prefer to have this information for my, myself and then I decide how much I want to buy from you and when I want to buy because that increases my optimi locally op optimized uh, decision making. And then Nestle could tell them, look, let's, let's do it differently. I'll, I'll give you, I will buy this information from you to some extent because uh, you don't buy. You, you 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 won't need to buy products from me any longer. What we'll do is, I will have my own my own people uh, restock your shelves with uh, with Nestle problem uh, products, right? Whenever we, we see that it's missing, uh, I don't know some coffee or some whatever product they have. Whenever we see that you're missing and, and, and that you're going to miss sales because of that, there will be someone from us already there, including putting that on the shelf again. And you don't even have to, you don't buy uh, products from us uh, beforehand. You know what you do is whenever you see any of our products go through your, your cashier, whenever someone pays for one of our products, that's when you will have to pay us. So notice, uh, uh, they end up, uh, get, uh, and, and then they say, but, I, but we need to know exactly when, uh, when our product is, is, is getting out of, of your cashier. Or in fact, they, don't, they, they can have that, or they can know that already because they are, replenishing the, the shelves. So they know what's happening in the, the retail market to decide what they're going to produce, to the, what, what they'll be manufacturing in their plants, right? Can you see the, the benefit of uh, doing that? Uh, the, the retailer uh, gets the, the benefit of, of not having to buy stock of Nestle products. Nestle is the holder of the, pro the, the, the stock itself. Nestle will, uh, 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 Nestlé will, will know that a product was sold when it goes through the cashier. And, that, and that's when uh, the company is going to, to pay them for the product. Uh, of course, they, the only thing that they, they, they don't want is people consuming their goods inside the supermarket. But assuming that people are not consuming their products inside the supermarket, because if, if that happens, they would never be paid for the product. Right? But assuming that uh, the, they have this agreement with the, with the supermarket that people will, will not... Uh, drink their products uh, or eat their products in the markets uh, before they go, go through the cashier. They're happy to do that because it's, they're, they're exchanging, they're providing the, the retailer with, with this advantage and they have the advantage of, of having that information in real time instead of only getting that information uh, much later when their decision-making uh, process has already been biased by the noise introduced uh, by, by the links in the middle of the way, for example. Okay. All right. Uh, I, I think this is a good place for us to stop uh, and, and, and have a 15-minute break. Uh, and then when we come back, uh, we'll, we, we can already, then already discuss uh, our um, Michael Dell, uh, sorry, uh, the, the interview with, with Michael Dell, uh, the power of virtual integration, and think in which ways it's, uh, it, it helps us solve some of the problems that we saw here uh, in, in, in other clever ways. Okay, so uh, maybe we, we, we could come back at 45 past the hour. Okay, so now we have to see how that the connection the connection that we can make between uh, Michael Dell's strategy for for, for Dell computing uh, and uh, the ideas that we we had or the insights that we had by playing the the, the beer game. Right, um, I find this this interview by Michael Dell impressive. 
because uh, he was very, or at least seemed very clear and crystal about Dell's strategy uh, in the late 90s. Um, he even said what kinds of customers he wanted and which, which customers he preferred that were dealt by IBM, Compaq, HP, the other companies that were in the business at that stage, right? He said, I don't want to sell microcomputers to people who are buying their computers for the first time. Uh, and notice that even the, 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 when he redesigned his, his uh, he, when he, des he designed the, the, the network for that specific business, uh, he conceived a, a, a new way of selling computers that was through the internet already, right? Or, or through electronic means. Which means that uh, even the the network he proposed uh, almost impeded uh, him or, or prevented him from from selling to someone who was buying the first computer because by definition you cannot buy your first com uh, your first computer if you have to, to use another computer to do that right and 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 Michael Dell's business was based on you assessing the company's websites to. Uh, customize uh, your product directly from there. So he did, he definitely didn't see value in in, in selling uh, uh, computers to f uh, first time uh, computer buyers, and uh, he built uh, a way of selling computers that even prevented him uh, his company from doing that. Okay. So my first question to you is, uh, why didn't he want these uh, uh, these customers who were buying the first computers? Uh, why why didn't Dell, why wasn't Dell interested in selling computers to people that were buying computers for the first time? Yeah, why wasn't Dell interested in selling computers to people that were buying their first computers? I didn't come across this part in particular, or is it like a resolution? Uh, it is, uh, well, well, maybe there, there's, there's a lot of details in this text, uh, right? And, and I can tell you if, you, if you read it more than once, you will notice uh, uh, things that you didn't uh, pay attention the first time. But basically, uh, he claims that, well, he, he, his, his business is the business of customizing products, right? Of, of, of selling you a customized computer. Can you customize a product that you don't understand? No, you can't. You don't know. You, you, you have to know the value that you want to extract from that, 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 that product so that you can customize it to your own needs. You, you have to know what your needs are. You have to know what the, that product can, can bring to you. Right? So understanding that, uh, Dell said, I have no business proposition or business value to people that are buying their first computer. I prefer that they buy their first computer from, from IBM. And then after six months, they will already understand you know, the, the tricks that the computer can, can play and the, the tricks that it can't. And, uh, and after six months, the customer will already be disappointed that he, he or she bought that specific computer because he didn't know what to buy. So you, the, the, there is a learning curve of buying computers uh, that he didn't want to be part of because he thought the first, the first purchase of a computer is going to be a disappointing one uh, because people will only later realize that they could have done better. So he said, buy your first computer from IBM. Or, or HP, don't buy it from me. That, that was part of the message that was conveyed even in the way of, uh, of allowing people to buy uh, its products. Uh, I will not allow you to buy a computer from me if you don't have a computer from which you can buy it. Okay? Uh, so this, this was part of his business, not, uh, and, and of course, and, and he, he tells uh, uh, clearly enough in this uh, interview that he's, he, doesn't, he doesn't want um, uh, he doesn't want to deal with with customers that don't know what they they want. Uh, that should be the business of of, of his um, com competitors. In fact, I think that when he uh, uh, he, he he allows um, Harvard Business Review to interview him in these terms here, he's trying to explain to to the potential customers, computer customers, who would benefit from buying from Dell and who would let's say benefit in quotation marks from buying. From, from IBM or, or, or Compaq or HB. HB. He says, if you're a first time buyer, buy from them, get upside, upset with them, and then when you know the, what, the, the, what you're looking for, then come and talk to me. Uh, again, uh, uh, st many strategists think that a strategy is something that should be only on the strategist's minds uh, and, 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 and that the competition should not know about it. 
The main thing about Dell's model is that it cannot be mimicked by the competition, right? He's telling uh, uh, very clearly to the market, I don't want that part of the job. Please buy from IBM if you want to buy your first computer, right? Uh, and, and he's obviously also telling that to IBM and to, to Compaq and HP, you know, be happy with the part of, of the business that I'm allowing you to play with because the rest of the market, it's going to be mine because I can do something that you cannot do. And, uh, mm -hmm. and that has a lot to do with you are incumbent companies. You have your way of doing things. It's very difficult to change it now. I am a new startup. Uh, I, I learned from your the things that you did right and from the things that you did wrong. And, and in fact, the things that the others had done wrong were not wrong. They were right at the time that they, they, they were there, right? But they became wrong as time went by. That happens to most strategists. And, and this is one of the things that I tell you that I'm a little disappointed with my own uh, teaching of strategizing because I, I feel that most times companies are tricked by their own success, right? I told you that when we... We get, for example, to this model here. Uh, I, I told you that I don't see the revolutionary steps happening inside a, a, an organization. I think that they usually happen inside the industry, but th these changes here, the revolutionary changes happen by means of new companies that start from, from scratch, that are not attached to the old ways of doing things. So Michael Dell was pretty confident that he had a new way of doing things that could not be copied by, by the competition. This is why I think he's so clear in, in, in the messages uh, that we see in this, uh, in this paper. And of course, notice that he builds the whole idea of his uh, company around uh, some of the, the perspectives that we saw in this model here. Right? He tries to build a very strong customer interaction uh, or this virtual encounter with the customer. He tries to, to, to be very strong at this asset configuration in organizing the way his company works together with suppliers in, in true resource collisions. And, and he knows that his competition will never be able to be as strong as his company is in developing a, a resource collision uh, or in, in allowing customers to be part of dynamic customization. And then my second question is, why is he so sure that he can do these things while uh, IBM, Compaq, and HP couldn't? Well, the, the main reason is, is, is all about the model that they are following, actually. Like, they are not, I would say, the, they is not reinventing the wheel. They are not recreating the wheel. Uh, assigning the capability or assigning a space in their strategy for the manufacturer and doing everything from scratch that's a lot of cost and a lot of time is mm -hmm. going to be through market. But he put it straightforward. That's going to be unnecessary cost and time wasted. Therefore, we can come up with this approach. And by the time we try to enhance this approach, all the way that we got to away the middle of the interaction with the customer, he got to a point where he can actually plant his eyes, I will use this term, plant his eyes into the inventory so they can predict and even reduce the waste time further. Mm -hmm. That was like, nobody else had it. Only Remember that, yeah, that, that thing about uh, the way he deals with Sony monitors. He says, I don't, you know, I, I need this. If Sony is going to be my partner, I need Sony to understand very clearly uh, the, 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 the market of, uh, of uh, monitors, because otherwise it will happen what happened to Uchi with, uh, with his beer, right? Uh, Sony will be manufacturing thousands or, or millions of, of uh, monitors at, at a time believing that the market is hit up when, when that's not the case and, 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 and in other times they will be, have uh, very low levels of production when that's also not the case. I want them to have crystal information about the market. So what he does, he is the retailer. In fact, he's the, he's the, the, manuf the assembler, but he's also the retailer. He sells directly to the customer yeah. and, and he goes there to Sony and says, I will share my spreadsheet with you. You know what Uchi wanted? I want that column that shows the, the, the sales, the direct sales to the, the, the end customers. Uh, Dell is happy to provide that, uh, that information to its suppliers because it says, in, in his mind, he, he thinks this is a business that we have to win as a team. Uh, we have to be successful together. So Sony, 
while you are a, 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 a good supplier, while you are my best possible supplier, I want to make you my best possible supplier. So I will give you the best information I can so that you can provide me with the best product at the most convenient way, the, 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 with the, the lowest cost and so on and so forth. Okay. Uh, uh, it gets to this uh, situation that, that uh, Sony's monitors are made in Mexico. They never travel to the they never travel to, to the, the, the manufacturing plant of Dell in, in Austin, Texas. They went straight to the city where uh, it was going to be delivered to the, the end customer. And then, of course, there was a, a, another, a, no, notice there is another supplier there, very, the resource coalition works to, to an extent that this supplier, the, the, the logistics supplier, gets the, the monitor from, from Sony in Mexico, gets the, the PC from Austin, uh, Texas, brings them all together to, to, to the city where the, the, the customer lives and then assembles it to the customer. It's, it's actually the logistics provider who's trained to do that, that, that uh, last mile support. They go to the, the, they used to go to the, 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 the customer's home and install the computer for the, for the person. And we have to think at this time, you know, in, in, the, in the 90s, um, companies still had huge problems with uh, customers that didn't know exactly how to, to even to assemble their, 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 their computers, I mean, to, to put a monitor and, 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 and the desktop together. Um, uh, I remember having read that Apple at one stage, when you, when you bought a, 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 an Apple, and Apple was very integrated, it was integrated with just one piece uh, uh, PC at that stage. When you turned it on, when, when you turned it to, to, the, 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 to, to, to electricity, the first thing they would do was to present you a video of how to use the mouse. You know why? Because people thought, well, the, the, the closest thing to a mouse some people had seen in the past were their sewing machines pedals. You know, sewing machines for, for that. The, the, the. So, so they, they, they thought that there was the risk that people would turn on a mouse and not knowing that that was a mouse that was to be used with their hands, put it on the floor and try to, to, to use it somehow with their feet. That was the level of knowledge that uh, those first time users of computers had of, 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 of personal computers. So it's difficult even for us to imagine nowadays, but this is another, uh, 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 an additional motive why Dell didn't want to sell computers to, to first time users, right? He didn't want his mice crashed uh, by people's feet trying to do something with, uh, figure out uh, how to use that different uh, gadget or something, right? Uh, so this is one thing. Uh, another interesting thing uh, uh, about this uh, paper, and I say uh, many times, and again, of course, I'm talking about uh, the interview with, with Michael Dell to, to Harvard Business Review. Many times I present this paper to my undergraduate students, and, and then I ask them uh, something, and they say, that was not in, on, on, on the paper. And I said, well, it was. It's just that you were not paying attention to... There were so many different details. One thing that he says here is he prefers to be someone who goes, who, who, who goes to a, a horse race and checks the, the winning horses without having to bet on them. He first checks who the winning horses are and then he, he partners with, uh, with, with those. Uh, instead, instead of getting into a race and be that 21st horse. Exactly. He says, why will I produce my own processor? Why will I produce my own hard disk? Why will I produce my monitor? If, if Sony is good at that, I want to partner with, with Sony, but I have to partner in a way that this is a synergistic uh, a partnership in which the owners of Sony, as well as the owners of Dell, and, and, and they, they all are egos, but egos that have that, 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 the information about the whole so that they work together. Right? So sometimes people say, but uh, is this really a, a collaboration model? Because when Michael Dell says that he would rather watch the competition among, among the horses and, and pick the horse only at the end, this is very competitive. And indeed it is, but it's not a competition between Dell and its suppliers. It's a competition among suppliers in the market. And, and what, what he says is, be the best horse. The, you. If you're the best horse, I will pick you and keep being the best horse. Because that's another issue that happens, you know, uh, whoever has... Uh, any experience with uh, with um, communism uh, knows that it, it ends up uh, reducing the level of interest in, in keep pushing things uh, ahead. Because I mean, if you're if you're always going to to have this gain to have the same gain as someone else who's putting less effort, you you might as well put less effort. 
And I'm telling you that like that because in the in the late 80s, early 90s, I was a student in Germany. Uh, right at that time, uh, when when the the, the the Berlin walls went down, and we had we were able to experience at that stage the difference between being in West Germany and being in the in the um, let's say in in, in, in the in the Soviet uh, Germany at that stage. I remember that we, we, we went visiting universities that were, where they had very good scientists and everything and, and, and then staying at, at the homes of uh, other students and they didn't have refrigerators. They had holes uh, on the, uh, the, the ground where they kept uh, things fresh because they didn't... I mean, the, the lack of competition is really bad for the market uh, in terms of developing innovation. Uh, but at the same time, Michael Dell is saying, well... Be in the market, uh, race, race uh, your horses to, to, be, to uh, race and, and be the best horses. And after you're a, you're a very good horse, and I choose you to be part of my team, I will provide you with all the effort I can to keep you being a good horse. But you have to. to I mean, you, you you cannot relax because if you relax and, and and if you're not a strong horse any longer, I will, I will find another horse. So notice, it's, it's, it's collaboration without allowing for, it's not a loose collaboration that we, we're going to be partners forever. We're going to be partners while you, you are a, a competitive horse. Right? There is this Brazilian poet uh, who had this uh, saying, which, uh, which is really romantic in, in Portuguese. I ho hope it's, it, it's, it's going to be romantic uh, in, in, in my translation into English as well. But... Uh, and it becomes very pragmatical here. He says, uh, I wish love to be uh, forever while it lasts. It will be for a little while. I, he says, I wish, I, I, wish, I wish love forever while it lasts. Under uh, and he said, basically, what, what, what he's saying is, I, I tell this my wife, and she, she doesn't think that I'm being uh, very romantic. I say, Yes, we married. That doesn't mean that now I have to be fat and ugly, and uh, you know we, we have to keep we, we we keep it's it's not that we keep in the markets. We're we're very faithful, and we, we've been faithful for for thirty years, but uh, we we keep being competitive, although we are not in the market. Let's say so. So that that's what uh, she, she she thinks that I'm uh, that, that's an engineer's approach to 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 to, to poetry. <laughs> but I said you know what what the poet was saying is that it's going to be. Uh, forever because we we know that for it to be forever it has to be forever while it lasts I mean we have to keep uh, uh, putting effort into into div in, into sustaining that situation right so uh, uh, the world tends to chaos if we don't keep uh, uh, pushing it towards uh, uh, the organization that we, we we want so this is this is another clever way of uh, thinking because he's very collaborative there's the information flow that uh, Dell has with his partners seems to be that the kind of information flow that I told you that is, is difficult to obtain otherwise because in many times uh, organizations uh, prefer to optimize locally and then they waste the opportunity of optimize globally Dell says our business is a, a business to be globally optimized and then we of course that will make uh, the cake grow bigger and then we share uh, larger slices instead of uh, trying to get a larger slice simply from, from the same cake, simply by, by, by being smarter than, than our own partners, right? So playing against our own partners. Right? So my idea about this uh, 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 paper is that, uh, and I told you at the beginning, that is that, of course, Michael Dell was a medical, medical uh, doctor uh, student uh, who, who was pushed by destiny uh, towards becoming an entrepreneur. He, he was probably going to be an entrepreneur anyway, but he was pushed into being an entrepreneur in the, in the, in the computers industry. He had a vision to, to understand, or he, he, was, he was able to understand that there was something here that needed to happen with respect to some revolution in the way that business was happening, possibly because he was already seeing that the product was modular. So if the computer was modular, why not to perform dynamic customization? Why not provide better value to the customers, right? Uh, on something that had already been designed to be for that, even if people did not know, right? So he was looking at this and saying, yeah, there is, there is definitely, sorry, there is definitely uh, 
this, this business, this industry has to change. And he was the one who, who brought this change into, in, 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 into, into that business at that time. Uh, and by doing that, I think, I, in fact, I think he was, you, you know, he, he did not study, he did not study, uh, direct, probably did not study what McKenna was saying. Uh, he did not study what Henderson and Van Katerman were saying. In fact, he was studied or his, his, his business was studied by these people that saw on Dell and in other, uh, and other companies of that time, uh, the, the, the ability of uh, envisioning a new world, envisioning new possibilities, revolutionary levels of business transformation that the incumbent companies were not being able to, to see. And this is so, uh, I, I, I do think that uh, Dell was lucky, for example, to have solved the problem of the bullwhip effect that we saw in the, in the beer game without ever considering it. I mean, he didn't build his company the way he did because he said, well, I want to get uh, to avoid or to prevent my company from, from being um, affected by this perverse uh, information flow uh, 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 effect, right? He, it wasn't his intention. But as I told you, uh, a, a, a good in, uh, entrepreneur to be successful has to be smart, has to be... Um, uh, has to to have the ego's perspective of the world, but has to also be a, a little lucky, right? And he was, I believe, he was uh, lucky also in that sense. Uh, his model solves uh, at least a huge part of the problem uh, with the, the information flow because it is a model that is built to improve information flow. The 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 idea of being direct, they call it the uh, the, the, the Dell's direct mode, right? It's direct with the end customer, so it sells directly to the end customer so that to, to prevent noise to be introduced there, it, it, it relates very closely to the suppliers also, right? Michael Delp refers to, again, in, in that uh, idea of uh, being forever while it lasts, uh, he preferred his company to have uh, not many suppliers. So he prefers to deal with a small number of, uh, of suppliers that are for, 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 for whom Dell's business is really important. He wanted to be special for his customer, sorry, for his suppliers, uh, um, um, you know, so that uh, whenever, whenever the, the, the environment changed a bit, or whenever he had to make changes, uh, the, the, the 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 business uh, required changes, that his uh, um, suppliers would prioritize his company to the competi uh, competitors who were also probably also uh, uh, customers of them. For example, Sony possibly also sold monitors to, to some of the other uh, uh, manufacturers, although some of them had that idea that they had to build their own, their own equipment, right? But Sony could sell to the others as well. But in case something changed, uh, if Michael Dell pressed, look, we, um, our, our business is changing a bit. I, I need you to go this way. Uh, Dell, uh, sorry, Sony would probably go with um, Dell because that was the most, that was the customer that was more, more profitable to, to, to them. They were not playing one against the other. They were playing together, right? Uh, what else did you see there that impressed you or that, that called your attention in, in, in this uh, interview? Well, uh, again, like we've already mentioned these points, the fact that he didn't have to invent, reinvent the wheel. Uh, also, it impressed me when they came up with this inventory solution, I would say, which is still, till this very day, it's common in a lot of corporation that that may basically specialize in the IT support. Which part of that in particular? He mentioned, I cannot remember which page exactly, he mentioned the part that it was hectic a little bit when they just called their customers and tried to troubleshoot and understand what is the issue with their systems. They came up with this idea to give like tags and label, and I mean, the moment they ship these machines to them, they label it, not for the sake of just serial number, which is really annoying a lot of places now in the support industry. The first thing the user, the, the support person would ask the user, what is the serial number, which is not English. Mm -hmm. What is the computer name? Again, it's not English. They would have to right click and find. But the fact that you're coming with this vision, having a database based on naming, you're having full description for this particular machine that's assigned actually to this particular user, which assuming you're having a really good terms and relationship with the users. That's very interesting, and it's also perfect to keep track on uh, mm -hmm. 
But before before you go any further, notice that this allows them to become the IT department. The IT uh, uh, department in the sense that they, they, they are the, they're the suppliers, but at the same time, they can tell company, look, you've had this computer for, for that long, or probably you, you need a, a additional memory, uh, considering that now uh, Microsoft has uh, changed its software. It, you, they become the IT department of their customers. Considering also the fact that they were involved in their customers, in a type of relationship where they could understand or even have a vision about their tasks based on that they predict the capabilities that they would need and they would get recommendations which is super powerful in the support mm -hmm. like that's any user who doesn't speak the language yeah. that's what they would need yeah. I will come to you man woman you know me just give me what I need mm -hmm. that, that's their language yeah. and if you are able to forecast and come up with this without even them asking that's perfect so another point which interests uh, interest also is Michael had this mentality and the, the mindset to keep up with the connection by hosting and it, like doing some meetings on, on time basis mm -hmm. and specifying the categories of the meeting whether with the CIOs whether the technical whether the business to hear their views yeah. and based on that they would be able to do the their plan in, in their industry okay now this is going to be the vision this is going to be the new orientation this is the kind of expectations that they would need mm -hmm. the same thing where Uche said it's interesting for him to have access to the market uh, to the end user uh, orders more or less it's correlated it's yeah. more or less the same concept you need to get the closest as possible and that's the keyword that even today's sales representative telling you about you would hear this word a lot a salesperson that would tell you your phone without numbers you yeah. are our business. Mm -hmm. You're not a sales representative. It's all about contact, yeah. relationships, and connection. Mm -hmm. Mainly these are the main two things that was like, this man knows what he's doing. Yeah. So, no, and, and, uh, and one interesting thing here is, as I told you, uh, if you read this again in six months, month time, you're going to see some other details there. It, it, I don't think that this uh, interview happens the way it seems like, oh, he, he just went there to the Harvard Business Review editorial office or something, or, or of, of course, they probably went to Microsoft, but I don't think it was a one one time sit there and, and this happens in, in, in a one hour time, all right? This was this was probably negotiated with, with Dell for several months and they, and they were structuring this. They wanted to sell their strategy. They, 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 they said, we agreed to give this uh, speech, but we want our customers to understand our business proposition. We want the suppliers to understand, uh, to, to understand how valuable they are to, to us. We want even our competitors to know what they are, you know, where they should be uh, and, and, and where they are going to be because we will not allow them to go to, 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 to get anywhere else. They were very powerful with this uh, at, at that stage. It's very difficult to have uh, um, a, a strategist to be so clear about their strategy, but it was because they were at, that, at this stage he knew, I, I can say it all, I cannot be copied by my, my by the competition. They will be mad, but they can't do much because they are they are stuck to their old ways of uh, doing business. Uh, I, in fact, he, he saw all goods in, in advertising his his company. Of course, was was Dell always exactly like uh, here? No, this this was the message. That this is the way he wanted us to perceive his company. Hopefully, I I, I do believe that it was pretty much like this in 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 in, in, in many instances. But it's not a perfect uh, description of, of the, the business itself. It's a, possibly a better description of what this guy wanted his business to be. Um, and of course, as I usually say, it was very successful while it lasted, right? Uh, this model, Dell doesn't sell computers this way any longer. In fact, nobody sells computers any longer. Right? Uh, uh, or, or at least it's not the, the, the big business that it used to be in the past. Uh, the company itself suffered a lot with the changes in the the business environments that happened with with that recession that the the united states uh saw and and, and, and that, that, that it was very clear in 2007 2008 you've probably uh, have heard of it as being the subprime uh, uh crisis uh when the north americans were not being able to pay the mortgage of their homes and then they sort of I mean, they stopped paying the mortgage, which means that at some stage they would be kicked out of their homes, right? Uh, and then I usually tell my students, uh, if you check the year that, that, that Dell stopped being the leader in the, the market of computers, it was 2005. It could have been predicted. Uh, in fact, it could have predicted 
uh, the, the, the world crisis of 2007, 2008, because before someone stops uh, uh, paying their mortgage, a few, a few years before that, they stop replacing their old computers, right? It's, I mean, when you have to tie, tie your belts, you don't, st you don't start saying, I'm not going to pay for my housing any longer. First, you st start saying, what, what is superfluous there? What, what, what can I... Uh, and, and so, I would say, in 2005, when Dell was uh, overtaken by HP as the leader in the, the market of computers, it really meant that the markets where computers were being sold to, to people who, who knew what they were buying were on crisis. Uh, 2005 was a year where computers were being sold in the world in basically in, in the BRICS. Uh, Brazil, China, India, South Africa. Those are, were, the, were the countries that in 2007, 2008, up to 2012, were doing good. And those were, were countries and places where you could not buy your computer through the internet, simply because you were buying your first computer. So uh, we, we, we could have predicted uh, let's say even the, the international crisis based on what was happening in 2005 with the market for Michael Dell. That shows us only that the environment changes. It's, it's not Michael Dell's fault that uh, the American economy was doing bad. Maybe it was uh, his fault that he didn't forecast that and, and saw in time that he would have to start selling computers to, to people that were buy, buying the first computers because others were more concerned with, with their homing and, and, and with, with their... With, 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 the, the, with, with paying for their mortgages and things like that. Uh, but he missed that, or his company missed that, which shows us that there is no strategy that is good forever. Uh, in fact, I, I, I do think that Michael Dell is aware of this, but he's at the same time, he's sort, sort of... Uh, there, there's a, state, uh, a place in, in, the, in the paper that he even says, I wished that uh, the, Dell, my, the Dell people were people that were always thinking about the new and not bragging and, and saying... Oh, the Dell model as if, as, as if it were the, 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 the key to the success in the future. He says, it, it's, it's, the, it's the key to our success now. We will have to struggle to find what will be the key to the success in the future, right? He was not, let, let's say, five years from, or, or seven years from, from this time, this, this interview here was in 2000, uh, sorry, 1998, 1999. Uh, so less than 10 years after that, his model was showing uh, problems uh, the same way as as uh, IBM and HP were showing the problems of their model ten years before, right? Uh, so this is to, to, make, to try and make it clear to you that uh, there, there's nothing that is going to be successful for forever. But this concept of the, the the direct model, virtual integration, all those concepts that were proposed uh, by Dell and, and and other companies of the time and and are expressed in models like this. I think that this lasts still a lot, right? It, it, they, they may not be the the the, the model that, that will push Dell into the into its next uh, round of success, if it if, if uh, or but but it, it, it's there's still uh, let's say the drivers of digital transformation that uh, that people talk so much about, uh, but which is so difficult to implement because. Digital transformation is not a technical issue. It's it's a business issue more than it's also a technical issue. But but uh, before being a technical issue, it is a a, a business a business concern. And and of course, it's it's it relates to business mindsets. If people are thinking about competing within the the value chain, they're going to be competing against each other. We will see a lot of uh, local optimization, but we will see little opportunities for using technology to have a more synergistic uh, approach. To, to, to business, okay? Right, uh, what we have next is, uh, is capturing, uh, uh, sorry, we'll try, yeah. Capturing and managing knowledge uh, in and from the value chain. What we will try to do here is address that third value, the, the, the third um, um, vector of, uh, of virtual organization that was proposed by Vinka Treman and, and, and Henderson. Um, and I chose two papers here for us to, to discuss. Bonabo, 2009, Decisions 2.0, and Malone at, at Ali, this is again an MIT professor, uh, talking about the collective intelligence and how to harness it. Uh, so this, this will be our two readings for Thursday. Please just remember that we will start earlier, right? We will start at 12 your time there in France uh, and go until three o'clock because uh, I have that uh, that thesis um, 
uh, precisely at three o'clock. So we'll probably even finish five minutes before that, so that my student is is not too too concerned that uh, his professor doesn't show up for his <laughs> for his thesis presentation. All right. Okay. All right. So see you guys on Thursday, uh, midday. So oh, tomorrow we don't have a class. No. Now it's Thursday. It's it. oh. because as per the schedule. Yeah, we, we do. Yeah. It's we, it, it, if we do, it's great. No, it's a information system and organization. It's a different dress. No, information systems organization. It's this one. Oh no 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 no! It's one thirty to five thirty. She was like one thirty. Yeah no yeah yeah yeah. I think yeah. Uh, actually, it seems like it's just like made a confusion in the course. Like yeah. there are two subjects which still this moment. Like the only difference I know that it's totally IT security or cyber security and this information and organization. But they're still calling that one with this name. Okay, my bad. So, no, but, but. Oh. Okay, okay. So, so our, our meeting is as I think uh, only on Thursday, right? Yeah. 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 My, my, my planning now, uh, maybe this, uh, you know, what, what could happen is that. No, it wouldn't be the original planning because the original planning was uh, all our classes would have been last week if I were there with you, right? So. Yeah, so uh, my, my, my planning now, we, we'll, we'll have this class on, on Thursday, then we have a, a, a class on Friday that will be on change, the change proposed by, by technology. Then you'll do your, your, your exam, um, I think, uh, on the 30th or 31st. And then I, I've asked a nanny for another hour with you after the exam, after I, I, I review your exams and everything, for us to have a final uh, discussion about... Uh,